Never have I witnessed such sincere hospitality and overwhelming spirit of true brotherhood as it is practiced by the people of and races here in the ancient Holy Land, the home of Abraham, Muhammad, and all the other prophets of the Holy Scriptures. For the past week, I have been utterly speechless now by the graciousness I see displayed all around me by people of all colors. I have been blessed to visit the holy city of Mecca. I have made my seven on the Kaaba, led by a young mutawaf named Muhammad. I drank water from the well of Zamzam. I ran seven times back and forth between the hills of Mount Asafwa. I have prayed in the ancient city of Mina, and I have prayed on Mount Arafah. There were tens of thousands of pilgrims from all over the world. They were of all, from blue-eyed blondes to black-skinned Africans. But we were all participating in the same ritual, displaying a spirit of unity and brotherhood that my experiences in had led me to believe never could exist between the white and the non-white. America needs to understand Islam, because this is the one religion that erased society, the race problem. Throughout my travels in the Muslim world, I have met, talked to, and even eaten with people who in America would have been considered but the white attitude was removed from their minds by the religion of Islam. I have never before seen sincere and true brotherhood practiced all colors together, irrespective of their color. You may be shocked by these words coming from me, but on this pilgrimage, what I have seen and experienced has fully arranged much of my thought patterns previously held. And to toss aside some of my previous conclusions, this was not too difficult for me. Despite my firmness, I have always been a man who tries to face facts and to accept the reality of life as new experience and new knowledge unfolds it. I have always kept an open mind necessary to the flexibility that must go hand in hand with every form of intelligence search for truth. During the past 11 days here in the Muslim world, I have on the same plate, drunk from the same glass and slept on the same bed or on the same rug while praying to the same God with fellow Muslims, whose eyes were the bluest, whose hair was the blondest of blonde, and whose skin was the whitest of white. And in the words, and in the actions, and in the deeds of the white Muslims, I felt the same sincerity that I felt among African Muslims of Nigeria, Sudan, and Ghana. We were truly all the same brothers, because their belief in one God had removed the white from their minds, the white behavior and the white from their attitude. I could see from this, that perhaps if white Americans could accept the oneness of God, then perhaps too they could accept the realness of man and cease to measure and hinder and harm others in terms of their differences in color. With racism plaguing America like an incurable cancer, our Christian white American heart should be more receptive to a proven solution to such a destructive problem. Perhaps it could be in time to save America from imminent the same destruction brought upon Germany by racism that eventually destroyed the Germans themselves. Each hour here in the Holy Land enables me to have greater insight into what is happening in America between black and white. The American Negro can never be blamed for his racial animosities. He's only reacted 400 years of the conscious racism of the American whites. But as racism leads America up the suicide path, I do believe from the experiences that I've had that the whites of the younger generation in the colleges and universities will see the handwriting on the walls and many of them will turn to the spiritual path of The only way left is to to ward off the disasters that racism inevitably must lead to. Never have I been so highly honored. Never have I been made to humble and unworthy. Who would believe the blessings that have been heaped upon an American Negro? A few nights ago, a man who would be called in America a white, a United Nations diplomat, an ambassador, a companion of kings, gave me his hotel suite, his bed. Never would I have even thought of that I would ever be the recipient of such honors. Honors that in America would have been bestowed upon a king, not a Negro. All praises to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Sincerely, Al-Hajj Malik Al-Shabazz.